about pets. We're all about fun. We have the nicest people. Our deals are number one. You'll love Dave's. Dave's <laughs> Soda and Pet City. We make shopping for your pet. Fun, 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 fun. We're filming. <laughs> Well, hello everybody, and welcome to Dave's Pet Show. So I think this is our second show of the new season, or third show of our 24th season or wow. something like that. Uh, crazy, it's crazy. But before, this is really important, before we even get started with the show, I just wanna go over something. If you have a student in any of the schools in Western Mass, or you're a teacher or whatever, you need to be participating in the Dave's Student of the Month program. We've been doing this for probably, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And this is what it is, it's a fabulous program. Every month, every teacher in all the, in the schools all around Western Mass get to pick out one kid in their class who did something good that month. And I don't care if it's a C student who got a B on a test, I don't care. You know, I, I'm not so concerned about the kid who always gets straight A's. I want like normal, not so bright kids like Kevin who might have, <laughs> might have done something, you know, really good or somebody did something good in the class. They get a certificate to come to Dave's. They get a free uh, Siamese fighting fish and food and everything in a bowl. I can't tell you how many thousands of these we have given out over the years. The kids love it it's it's just so great because oftentimes which is what i love the teachers give these um awards to students who ordinarily wouldn't get any recognition so every classroom is uh invited to participate you can email us at office at dave's pet food or call us uh in agawam we'll send out the uh, packets to the to the schools and it's just a great way to, at no cost, to the school to reward kids who have done well. So anyway, that being said, let's, let's uh, should we talk about this or is mum the word we can't talk about this? <laughs> Mum's the word. Mum's the word. So what do we got here, Mr. Kevin? So uh, fall time, um, really the start of the mum season. They come in just a, an array yeah, of colors. Whole, yeah, holy smokes. Um, uh, what's really popular now is uh, asters, beautiful purple colors. Um, these have been flying out, and I've been getting more and more in. And keep getting. Are these ones. locally grown like these the other are, stuff? These are, yeah. All our moms, all our cabbage and kale. Um, these are all locally grown, actually, not too cabbage? far from here. Cabbage. Cabbage. Yeah, you don't want to eat these cabbage, but they're ornamental cabbage and kale. Oh. Purple centers, white centers. Um, they're a great uh, accessory, and you can make a really nice fall um, display. In your like that. Garden. That's a really cool Just looking. Just like this, yeah, with right. the fall grasses. Yeah. Um, it's beautiful. Asters, actually, we have them cheaper than even the, um, our, the guy who grows them for us. They're cheaper than he sells them. So um, he's a little mad at me, but you know what? For our customers, it's worth it. Um, but the fall is a perfect time for planting so mum. And these are hardy mum. So... Um, most of them will come back next year, um, and especially if you mulch them a little bit uh, for the winter, they'll come back. And um, years past, a lot of people have had experiences where mums, they come up in the spring and they get really tall and leggy, and if you don't pinch them, they don't do well and they fall over. The new varieties are great. I hate it when my legs yeah. get pinched. <laughs> I fall over quickly. <laughs> the new varieties, you don't have to do anything. They, they stay small and tight and lots of flowers on their own. So they're genetically engineered almost? I mean, all yeah, they're selected like that. Yeah, it's not yep. chemically done or anything like that, but yep. they're bred that way, yeah. It's insane. So you leave these in the pots or do you plant no, them? Well, you can leave them in a pot. They're not gonna survive the winter, yep. um, but they're, they're best planted in the ground, but you can put it into a pot. A lot of people will put them into a, a container that they have their summer flowers in. Yep. Put this in when they go by, they treat them as an annual and just get rid of them. But you can plant them in the ground and they will come back. So, how, so these are everything here is mums, and what is this? 
This is an or ornamental grass. Yeah. Um, so th these are real or really popular now, and I'm not sure if you can swing over there, but we have a whole display of uh, different ornamental grasses. They're really popular now. Um, they're used a lot around ponds or just yep. in, the, in a garden somewhere to kind of... And you plant them in the fall? There's fall planting season? Fall or? planting is great. Most people think of spring as yeah. the fall, fall yeah. plant or the planting time. Yeah. But fall is an excellent time. In fact, it's better for some plants to plant in the fall. Um, and we have a great uh, sale going on for our perennials. Buy one, get one free. Yep. Um, it's a great time to plant Are they those. still alive or are they the dead oh, ones? Oh, of course they're alive. Oh, they yeah, are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Some select, and we have ones and twos of things, but we yep. have a lot of them. Yeah, we got to um, make room for the 2018s. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, push it, yep. tow it, plant it. Yep, even shrubs. Great. Our shrubs are 30% off, and it's yep. a great time to this plant This is when you should, those. that I know, right? Yep. This is when you're supposed to be planting all that stuff. Yeah, it's perfect time, and it has time right now for it to establish itself before the winter. Yep. So uh, we're going to go in probably. Again, we, we now have a very cool indoor. Yeah, yeah. it's not really a greenhouse. I don't know what you call it, but we're gonna we're we'll gonna show off house. that a plant house, right? We so have we're some gonna carnivorous plants. We do. Yes. Seriously. Yes, seriously. Oh, how cool! All right, so don't go away, folks. Uh, Matt and I will be back in two seconds with uh, whatever's got him excited these days. If you have an older sick cat or dog that doesn't have teeth, and we get this mm -hmm. a lot, a raw food is the best food that you can do. So, what do you say, Fiona? Let's let's give it a Ready? let's give, give it a, a little shot. whirl, huh? How fat? How, look at gone. Gone. If you have a dog or a cat that is ill, that doesn't have teeth, that has diabetes, state of the nature raw is the perfect diet for you. Hello. We're, we're, we're here live for I don't know how long. How long? Uh, <laughs> uh, Matt decided he wanted to take out our party snake. Uh, this is a party snake. What's her name? This is Miss Snake. Miss Snake? Miss Snake. That's, that's Great, quite an we, inventive. We, we had to think that long and hard about that one. She's shedding? She's starting to shed a little bit, yes. Yeah, she is she angry? See. She's looking at me. She's hungry. <laughs> Matt? No, she's actually, she just was fed a couple days ago, so she is good. She's just very active right now. As you can see, she is shedding a little bit. Yeah. She's starting a shed, so. But the you good don't want to pull that, that off, right? No, that should come out on its own. But the good thing is her eyes are cleared, so her peripheral vision I mean, is she good. She can so strike. She won't strike now. She won't strike out of fear. So she's a happy oh, snake. Seriously? She's a happy snake. She's a happy snake. She's in her happy place. She's in her happy place, right? You can hold her. No, oh, no, no. no. Well, Anyway, this is Ms. Snake, and this is one of our, this one's not for sale, but this is one of our pet snakes that we have on display that anyone can come and visit and hang out with. We also use because her. Because it's really what you want to do when you wake up in the morning, morning is come and hang out with a snake. Come out with hanging. You cannot imagine how many people we have in this area that do. <laughs> but this is our most popular. This uh, is our popular. Well, this is our birthday party. This sorry. is our birthday. This is our career snake, our job snake. We use her for birthday party and this is like one of the main attractions um, kids come in they get to handle all the different animals and this is the one that everyone every party we have half there's always a group of kids that are terrified of snakes and then the moment one brave kid comes up and touches it and holds yeah. it it's a chain reaction then they all want to do they it they all do it they all come up and they hold it and then we have the parents become curious and they want to hold her and and it's a lot of fun we also take her to... new meaning to my main squeeze. Your main squeeze, exactly. We also take her to schools. We take her to public events. Yep. Uh, this one's traveled through Six Flags, through various nursery schools. How old is this snake? She's about nine years old. Have we had her since she was a baby? Well, this one actually used to be my niece's. This was used to be my niece's, and she went off to college and couldn't bring her along, so she donated her for the pet for the birthday parties. Yeah. And she's very friendly. She's a ball python. She's a ball python. She's, a lot of people ask this the big question, is she poisonous? 
She's no. not po- no, she's, she's a not constrictor. Poisoned. She's a constrictor. She constricts. Watch, and watch, watch her as she constricts Matt. She arm, takes my pulse right now. And you can see his hand starting to get purple. Yep, that's why she's squeezed. She does actually have a pretty good squeeze, and she can hang on quite well. And she's surprisingly quite heavy. I mean, this one's several pounds, so she's a good sized snake. Um, she won't get any bigger though. A little bit, maybe a little bit, but pretty much this is this is it on her size. She's more how, of how, a. How long do they live? 14, 15 years. Oh, they do? Yeah, they, they have pretty good life soon. So she's a middle-aged one here. Um, we Like I said, the Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts all come in and handle her. And like I said, makes a nice display and people can, just something to look at, something to come yeah, and visit she's with. She's very active. Very active right now. Now these guys, this, she loves to eat. Once a week, she'll eat a deep thawed frozen small rat. Yeah. So she eats once a week. Yep. And a lot of people ask. You take her out of the cage when you feed her, right? Yes. Always a lot of people ask how you feed snake. You never want to feed them in the cage they lived in because if they're smart, they'll learn from association that if the top of the cage comes off and a hand goes in, food's coming. They'll bite the hand. They'll bite the hand that feeds them. Right. So what you do is you get a big Tupperware bin or a tub or a garbage pail. You put your your food inside the, in the pail, put her in and close it up and she'll eat inside the pen. They'll learn that that's where they're supposed to eat. So it's a very... Um, very simple task. And the nice thing a lot of people don't realize that snakes actually are very good pets. They're actually very, <laughs> well, for the most part, they're very clean. Yeah. They're very clean. Um, they are fascinating to watch. A lot yeah. of them have really nice colors and they're quiet. They're quiet. The only thing you want to make sure. They're quiet. They're quiet. Make sure you have a secured cage because they can squeeze out of cages if they're not secured or locked. And then you can't find them then in your you house. Can't find them, or someone you don't want to find them finds them, cat or right. mother in law or. Do, they, like do they ever bite? Any animal can bite any time Has they can bite. Has this one ever bit? No, I've never, I don't, I don't recall this one ever biting anyone. Um, even when my niece had her, she's actually very she's tame. She's pretty fat. Yeah, she's nice and fat. Not chunky. your niece, the, the, the snake. Yeah. yeah, the snake I haven't is. seen your niece in a long no, time. she's slender know. and skinny and little. But, oh. um, but yeah, these guys get pretty chunky. And this is a fascinating thing. A lot of people always ask, how does such a narrow little neck swallow yeah. down a big mouse? Yeah. Their jaw can actually detach and it can actually stretch wide open and then their whole neck will actually expand and their body will expand. They can take the whole mouse down in one gulp. They will actually, they will actually live on that one mouse for a week to 10 days. They don't need anything else because they're a slow, yeah, slow yeah. Metla- metabolism, slow digestion. So I was actually w- watching uh, one of the discovery thing. They were talking about the pressure, how a constrictor kills mm-hmm. and, yep. and it doesn't really st- strangle you it as it as it or suffocate you as it squeezes Mm -hmm. it causes the the internal pressure of the heart to Mm -hmm. to make it so that the heart just can't pump the blood can't pump any blood that's exactly right right that's exactly right and it's amazing how they do it a lot of them ambush predators you can see the coloration on this ball python it looks like the leaves so a lot of times they'll they'll attack from leaves and they'll swoop down and they'll grab stuff yeah. Um, then they'll constrict and they'll wrap yeah. and they'll do that squeeze mode. And then once the, um, and they do that for two reasons. One, if they take it, a lot of the animals can fight back and yeah. they don't want to get injured. And two, it's just easier for them to get the animal down because they'll turn it head first and then they can right. swallow it straight in. Right. But yeah, the where, fast, where, where are these guys uh, mostly? These are mostly in South America. It depends on the type. Yeah. Um, the one problem that they've had with these is down in Florida is a lot of people have gotten them more so the pi- the bigger pythons. Yeah, it's not the ball pythons. Not the ball it's pythons, the, the Burmese the, pythons, which yeah. we don't ever have up here. Um, we don't carry them They're in the too store. big. They're those too are the big. ones that get too big. That get too big. And, those and the reticulated ones. Reticulated, yep. And they're releasing them into the Everglades and things yeah. like that. This guy and right they're here. Dec- they're decimate. They're, yep, they're catching other animals they shouldn't shouldn't be. That, is our time almost up? Pretty much, but, yeah. Thankfully. <laughs> well, well, Matt, I'd like to say this was a real pleasure, but... Oh, you love it. I'm going to touch him once more. There you go. Do you ever pet him on the head, tell him he's a good boy, or she's a good girl or anything? Good girl. <laughs> I don't think they like to be petted, do they? No, usually that's a little, that's a sensitive spot, so they don't mind being petted, but sometimes Plus, you can Plus, you can never give them, like, treats and stuff. No, not really. Like, little... Just the, the satisfaction of having him slither, that's all. Okay. Well, we're going to slither out of this segment, and... Uh, We'll come back with something more, more funner. Hey folks, if you have a child in school from K through ninth grade, 
your school hopefully is participating in the Dave's Student of the Month program. Every classroom in Western Massachusetts every month gets to pick one student who did something special for that month. They come to Dave's, get a free beta. It's a wonderful reward. And if you have a child in school, make sure your school is part of Dave's Student of the Month. Well, we're here with Matt of Many Colors. Mm -hmm. and uh, Watch me change colors. Yeah, we I'll have a... i change the color uh, of this green to match this chameleon. That's a very cool looking chameleon. Isn't that cute? Isn't that cool? This is a veiled chameleon, and this is one of the easier of the chameleons to keep because they don't require the extreme... Oh, he likes you. He doesn't like me. He wants to stay put. Yeah. They, won't, they don't require the extreme variations in the um, humidity and venting. This one's a little more hot and arid, yep. and they like a little moisture, but an open-air cage with some circulated water and plenty of leaves to hang on. They're actually very, very, very cool. Um, what do you think? Look this at his guy eyes. Like, yeah, look at the eyes. Aren't they fascinating? They can see in all directions independently of each other. So it's almost like a telescope or a camera lens. As you can see, he's focusing on different things. Um, and, they, and they go separately. They go separately. So one might be seeing something on this yeah, side, yeah, yeah. the other one will see something on the other side. So, so you know what? All kidding aside, when you think, you know, it's a reptile, it's not that smart. Think how well the brain has to be developed. Developed to see independently. Right, indep on that. right. Right, and they are. And look at the feet. Look at the. They almost. They have prehensile toes. A lot of these lizards and reptiles almost have sucker feet or claws. Yeah. Look at this one. It's almost like a mar like a like a sloth or a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they use it to actually clamp and hang on to things. Um, the big funny thing is that you see a lot of people doing funny things with these guys because of those clamp people will stick tiny little swords or tiny little uh, <laughs> tiny little you know yeah, yeah, yeah. guns, army men guns because yep. they'll actually pretty much hang on to anything. As you can see, they happily hang up. They use those feet to like pretty much climb branches and. What do these guys eat? They are a bug and cricket eater. If you've ever seen one eat, they're very slow moving. They're not a fast. But mover, that wicked tongue. But that tongue will that tongue will whip out to about here to catch a cricket. They'll slowly walk up slowly to their what they're 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 focusing in on, and then just go whap, and then I'll suck them right in. So it's a fast. So the to tongue watch is as long as the whole body. Oh, it stretches way out. Way it out. Way out. Way out. Way out. Longer than the body. How long do these guys live? Um, it, you know, under good care, they can go seven or eight years. So they. Have and these are captive good, bred, folks. These, are these, captive these bred. do not. Yeah, these do not come out of the wild. Yep, these are all. He was born and bred in California. Yep, and this is captive bred and baby, and they've pretty much been raised up since that point. This one here is about about two months old. Wow, so they are little, so cool. But is it a lot of care for these, Matt? Well, it's a little bit more difficult than, per se, like your bearded dragon, where you're just throwing down vegetables yep. and giving them heat. These guys, as you can see, like a cage that is not glass fronted. It's a screen cage, so yeah, you have a good circulation of air. Because yeah. they are prone to respiratory issues. Um, but other than that, if you just have your regular... Is there another one in there? There's, there is one in there hiding in there somewhere. Yeah. I just couldn't find them at the time. This guy was convenient yep. to grab. Um, they do require a couple. They need a heat lamp, and they also need a UVB light, which gives them the proper sun rays that they need yep. for their proper bone metabolism. Um, but they're not a lot of... Uh, really, other than that, if you just yep. set them up properly, they're really not a horribly Is this an easy case to clean? Because you got to yes. clean the case yes. once in a while. This is simple. You just simply take everything out, run yep. it underwater. You have carpet on the bottom. You can just brush that off and clean it, put everything back together. Yep. Not difficult. Just run your plants underwater. Keep it simple. Um, this right here is a circulated water dish. They're not going to drink out of a water dish like, a, um, like some of these other guys do. Yep. These guys like moisture. They like like dew or humidity. So if yep. it has like a misting area or a like a dew area where there's dew on plants, they're going to come and they're going to lick off of that. They're going to get their moisture from that. And you just throw in some crickets every day. And throw in some crickets. Throw in live. some crickets live. Yes, they do like live crickets. So yep. every day you want to keep a few crickets crawling around in there, and they can hunt. Um, but other than that, they're they're gentle it's to handle. It's very cool. They're they're generally. So talk to me about salmonella. Yes, salmonella is something that is carried by just about really any animal but mostly reptiles in their defecation and in sometimes in their saliva right? saliva right any time you have anyone who has especially younger people or or um, older people anytime you've handled them wash your hands immediately wash your hands immediately yeah with anti uh 
Right, with antibacterial soap. Bacterial soap, soap. And yeah. of course, you know, a lot of kids will want to cuddle and kiss them. You don't yeah. want to do that with these guys or yeah. any reptile like that because yeah. that can spread. It's, it's, not a, um, it's not a huge constant concern, but it is something you just want to be aware of with any, yep. with any, really any animal, mostly with these reptiles. And also, big important thing is keeping the cages clean too. A lot of people will sometimes, they'll lax on yep. keeping the bedding clean and that can also spread one, it's not good for them. Two, it's not good for people. As so well you have too. to clean the leaves and the trees and all yeah, that. Yeah, but stuff really, you just what do you take, use to what do you use to clean it? With? Usually, just run under you know run it under water. You just give it some clean water. Um, sometimes if, if you some dew dissolve. Do you use dew well, dissolve? Yep, there is dew dissolve. There are some spray downs and there's yeah. some um, cleaners that we sell that'll clean everything. Yep. Um, and then some people will actually even soak them in that and then have alternate decorations. They just yep. swip, they switch back and forth. So while one's cleaning for so a few how much days, is a cage clean. like? This cage is a $79 cage, so everything you need, you're going about $150 yeah. um, with uh, $45 for the price of your of your reptile. So you've yep. got a nice little set. Under $200, you've got right. an interesting pet. Well, we were just told that time it's time, time to up. wrap this up. Mm -hmm. So uh, is this the end of the show, or do we have another one? We got one more. What do I know? Don't go away, folks. We'll be back in just a minute. Hey folks, it's Dave from Dave Soda and Pet City with the only 100% all natural, yummy dog food on the market. Nature's Logic 100% natural food at Dave's. Um, so uh, I have a carnivorous plant. Carnivorous plant, it's a Venus flytrap. Uh, yeah. Last time I got these in, they lasted one day. They were all sold out. So I I got a bunch of them here. Yeah. Um, it's a great plant. They actually are native to down south where they grow in swamps. Um, they, they do, like any other plant, get their energy from the sun. But these also, if you look in here, they have these little parts. Oh, I um, see. It's open. Parts. Yeah. It's can open. you see it? Mm -hmm. And they will actually catch flies. And it will digest the flies over time. So it doesn't get a lot of nutrients. It's not like you have to feed them flies. But if it catches one, it's perfectly happy. And they do really well inside. And it's just a really neat plant to have. And uh, Do they get, like, huge, like well, in the movie? Uh, no, it's not going to be Seymour. Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, but they will get much bigger. Um, you can transplant them. And there's actually shows. Actually, Miranda, our um, manager, just went to a carnivorous plant show. Um, and so it's a really popular thing. And they're, uh, they're pretty neat to have around. A carnivorous plant carnivorous show. Plant. Yes, yeah, there's a lot of them. I see. <laughs> so we're in we're in our uh, indoor greenhouse, uh, and hopefully we'll be able to get out of our indoor yeah, alive. Yes. And so what other kind of stuff do we have in here, Kevin? Um, so actually, I just got a great collection of cactus and um, uh, succulents and extravaria, um, different things. Um, you can see the different variety of plants. And for people who don't have necessarily a green thumb, cactuses are a little bit uh, easier to take care of. Yeah, because you never have to water them. Well, once in a while, but you not do? that much. But you can see, I mean, look at this one. It looks like it almost, not that you'd want to pet it, but it has um, hair. Uh, these are beautiful grafted cactuses, meaning they take a top of one cactus, stick it on the bottom of another, and it grows. Uh, but that's how they get these uh, really cool colors, and yep. they, they stay going. Um, these are the aloe. Most people think of the aloe plant that you can break off and use for um, burns and things yep. like this. But these are some ornamental ones. This is also this is called a Christmas sleigh um, cactus. And Dave, you want to feel that? You can feel it has like teeth on it. Yeah, it does. So it's kind no, of no, but my finger feels smoother already. There you go. See, <laughs> um, very neat. And, very and all these things that. Succulents? Succulents. So if you look at them, you know, they kind of have these puffy, fat leaves. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They hold the moisture. So they don't need a lot of water because they hold it. Whatever moisture they do get, yep. they hold themselves. Very cool. Um, and, uh, and how about all these? Um, so some these more succulent, um, just some uh, uh, pots that are potted up so someone could give as a gift. It's a yep. great gift item. Yep. Um, we do have some house plants, and we continue to get those in. 
Um, some people like to actually use them in their reptile cages or just as a house plant right. um, to take care of. Really, the pathos is a really easy to take care of one. That's the one where people will cut them off, stick them in water, and they get they more grow. plants. Right. Yeah, and then we have a few bonsai. Um, it's a great gift item. Um, and we're continually getting more. So this is the kind of stuff, there. right. So as the winter approaches, we ex will be expanding this. Yeah, yeah, for not indoor. only for gifts, but yeah, yeah, something but so people yeah, yeah. can uh, garden while they're inside during the harsh winter. So I have yeah. to ask this. Did you put this whole thing together? or did I did not. It came that it way. It came that way? Um, but this winter, I'm hoping to have actually a couple classes where we can actually teach people how to do some bonsais uh, because I have some uh, junipers outside that are meant for that. So uh, look for some of those classes. And these are That's these right. are hardy as well? Well, these will not last outside. Uh, no, um, but indoor. The this is yep. indoor. Right. Yeah, indoor. So here's a really important question. Are any of these plants poisonous to uh, cats or dogs? They are. There are some plants that are poisonous, and uh, most most animals will know or not. Well, yeah, dogs them, is not such a big yeah. deal, but cats, um, you The never... pathos, for instance, is actually, it's poisonous. It actually has a, um, crystals in it that if an animal or a person eats them, um, it actually breaks the uh, the vessels and it actually causes it to swell up. So it is poisonous um, in that aspect. So it's it's important to know what you're buying yep. um, and uh, and how it'll affect any animals. I should say so. Yeah. And how about the Venus flytrap? Besides it being harmful to other um, uh, insects and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's not poisonous that I'm aware of. Yeah. yeah. I've never heard of anything like that. Right. Um, and so the, I'm sure they're, they're eight ninety nine, and and you can have your own discovery channel. That there you go. Nature channel yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, we actually have some pitcher plants outside too, which is another carnivorous plant. Um, they're really beautiful, and they'll be coming in pretty a soon. A pitcher plant. It's called a pitcher plant. Yeah. It actually has a big kind of pitcher like um, tube that yeah. insects get caught in, and yeah. the plant and digests them. Digests them. Yeah. Mm. Oh, there's a fly foot somewhere. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe, yeah. Uh, it no. gets too close. Right. Um, but it's important for people to know. That's it. Time to wrap up, yep. I see. Well, uh, anyway, folks, I hope we had fun. And w uh, Kevin and I will survive getting out of here without getting eaten by <laughs> Seymour. We should name this place Seymour's Room. There you go. There we go. See you next week, folks. Take care. Hey folks, if your dog has a food allergy and you are looking for a limited ingredient, single protein food, California Natural is the best that you can do. As far as I know, it has the fewest ingredients. So if you're looking for a reasonably priced, limited ingredient diet, try California Natural at Dave's. Thank <laughs> you.